¿Qué tal amigos? Ya estamos de regreso aquí en el canal de la verdad de True Chano, el único canal que le trae noticias verdaderas al momento y en su idioma conmigo. Tengo una activista que usted debe de conocer. Si no habla inglés, por favor, quédese con nosotros para que practique su inglés. And if you don't speak Spanish, stay with us so you can practice your Spanish. Alicia. <laughs> so, hablo español poquito, pero no hablando con amigos. Does that make sense? Sí, sí. <laughs> Alicia, so okay. we're, we're finally getting uh, an opportunity to speak uh, live. We, we've been working on this for like two years, right? Yeah, I don't know. Just sometimes the things you want to do right in front of you, just put off, you know, for no good reason. So here we yeah. are. You know, I think there is something about this movement, what we call the movement, that it, it takes time. Like, you get introduced to somebody, and then the relation starts happening right there, but it just takes time for it to just solidify, you know, and then just... Yeah, and I think things don't happen before their time, you know? It, Sometimes the timing is right, and then everything, you know, takes off. But, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to, first of all, to introduce you with these guys here in the, at the True Channel because I know you want to put your podcast. These guys have, they have the experience. The only thing we don't have is funding, but everything else we have. That's the name of the game in this business. <laughs> no, Lots but, of ideas, but then a but, lot of these things take off. Because there's a there's a strong there's a the, the American people want unbiased truth. They want people to just tell it and cut like it is, you know. Right. Without we're, the teleprompter. We're working, on, we're working on it. I think Leo had a great meeting this morning, and we're we're trying to. I told you these guys they they have the experience, um, and they're looking for people like you and me so that we can bring the real news to to the community to our communities out there. Yeah. But, I was very interested in speaking with you because you are a wild card, right? You are uh, Latina, you are uh, Asian, you are Afro Latina. What do you consider yourself? I know who we're talking about. That you know what? Before. This is this is a this is an important question, right? Because I think you want to talk about identity politics. First of all, I'm mixed with everything. Uh, I haven't done a DNA test, but my dad's born in Jamaica. His dad's Chinese and part partially Indian, and his mom is um, Irish and Panamanian. My mother is is born in New York. Her mother is Cuban, and her dad is uh, black and white, uh, born in Florida. Right, lots to put together. But I'm an American, and I want us to transcend. Oh, what are you? What are you? What's your race? Just we all, you know, and and I think Republicans are reactionary or reacting reactionary when it comes to this right I, I i understand we need to wake certain minority groups up to the democrat propaganda the one the, the the demographics that are under the guise of democrat liberal propaganda by no fault of their own right society condition us conditions us it's on the tv it's in schools everywhere it's reinforced but when are we going to stop uh Playing by the Democrat strategy, in a sense, where we're separating and still in the, and, and 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 having our identity be based on our skin color, right? There's something beautiful about our heritage. All of us have our own unique heritage from different parts of the world, but that's what makes us American. Like, you know what I mean? Let's transcend race. You know, I did not know I was Latino until I came to the United States. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I am Latino or Hispanic. But you know, when you when you have government forms that that kind of like like in the industry in which I work in real estate, if you apply for a homeowners a home loan application, okay, at the end there is a a, uh, a box that you have to check, you know, and if you don't check it, I have to check it for you just based on on the way you look. It, it literally says that on the application. So right. you are either white, you're Hispanic, you're Asian, uh, you're black. <laughs> So the government plays a big part in this, uh, um, and it's it's unfortunate because you're right. It, it's very confusing. It's very confusing for me. It is. Well, I you know growing up in New York, which is, from my observation, you know, I've traveled to different states across the country. is one of the most diverse places, probably in the world, definitely in the country. And when you step outside of New York, everybody kind of sees things black, white, and Mexican is what I've noticed. And I think there's, I just, it's just exhausting because, you know, and then in high school, everybody's trying to fit in to their racial groups, right? There's the Hispanic kids, the black kids, the white kids, but we've got to just change our thinking. And I think we've come a long way, but 
there's still there's still a, a con- we're conditioned to to separate ourselves by race through politics for sure, right? There's still a Latino coalition for Trump, a Black coalition for Trump. When are we going to see the commercial where it's just everybody of other color and then they have enough money to, to, to put the graphics just like psh, 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 no more race, we are one. That's what I message is what we should be much closer to now in 2020. And, and it's, we're not it's there getting, yet because of Democrats, but Republicans play their part too. It's getting confusing, even with the campaign, because, for example, you have uh, yourself. You could be Black Voices for Trump. You could be Women for Trump. You could be uh, Evangelicals for Trump. Or you could be Latino, Latinos for Trump. So you're the four of them. So where? Not really. I don't feel ever. I never felt like I fit in to any of those, right? I don't speak salsa and by and dance by chata. Speak salsa, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't. I, I haven't felt acceptance in that clicky high school world, for example. Gotcha. You know, but and I think there's nothing wrong. I don't think we should be. Uh, I don't think we should continue being that way, where we're just sticking to our own, so to speak. Because and people like me left out when, when i started the latinos for trump thing and i was like you know i i push it so i've pushed it a lot but then i felt like i was leaving a lot of people outside that box because a lot of people would tell me hey but i'm not latino and, and i was like why am i why do we have to fight this way it's just it was very confusing but yeah let's transcend to that i i, I agree with you yeah but in the meantime look what we're facing in the political realm is 60 a hundred years, the entire American history of Democrat Party, with the Democrat Party okay. reinforcing racist propaganda, <laughs> right? And they are the party. We all know, all conservatives, that's why we conservatives. We study history. We understand what happened during the Civil War, lots of us, and what happened after the Civil War, and the two parties never switched. So... I'm sorry there's noise in the background right now. And, and, but... you know, it's, it's perfectly fine. I have six okay. kids. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, what yeah. I was going to ask, what's, what's your passion? What, what, when did you decide, you know what, I'm going to uh, start speaking my mind and I'm going to be a voice to my community? Well, first, I was a voice for the left for a while when I was a young teenager, you know, 16, 17. And... Um, I realized I was believing lies. I was believing propaganda. I never actually studied history for myself. And I accepted the fact that I was stupid. You know, not stupid in every dimension, in every aspect. I was stupid in the sense that I didn't know the difference between Democrat and Republican. I didn't study the Civil War. I didn't know what Abraham Lincoln was known for. I, I was stupid. And you know what? A lot of Americans are stupid because we're growing up, we're going through high school and college or whatever. I mean, yeah, even college. Okay, you can go make it and slide by without knowing basic facts about American history because the main thing that these professors do is they bombard you with communist, Marxist, socialist propaganda. And so when I woke up to the fact that I didn't know anything after I had been an activist for the left, um, I, I became an activist for the right. But first, I informed myself. I realized I was dumb. I saw that uh, there, the, all the propaganda, the lies, the left, how the left would spin stories. And back then, right during the Bush years, mm-hmm. uh, there were only there was only C, CNN, ABC, NBC, uh, CBS, right, Fox News. So your basic, your ba- there wasn't all that. There wasn't no social media. Right. There, that, right there, there was still AOL. You call dial in. It wasn't this, this whole world has changed now. And I think for me too, what I'm most frustrated about is people who the people who just woke up when Donald Trump came along still believe the fact that they still believe lies saying that uh, Donald Trump is uh, George Bush was racist and the Republican Party is racist and that, that they always have been. Sure, there may be corruption, but the Republican Party's fought for civil rights all throughout history while the Democrat Party was enforcing slavery or wanted slavery and fought to, for the, you know, succeeded and started a confederacy. So all these basic American history facts, I didn't know. And I found, I got the good news. I wanted to go spread the good news. And the way that people received it, my family, my friends, my best friends, I lost my best friends at the time because I liked, I supported Butch or I was a Republican. 
And then I go in the classroom and it could be an English class. It could be a gym class. And uh, you would hear, you would hear uh, bushes, the wars for oil, all the leftist propaganda. Republicans are racist. All that stuff is what you would hear in every class. And so I had to develop the courage because I was pretty shy to, to be the only one with a different viewpoint and raise my hand and speak out against it or say the republic, say the truth. No, Abraham Lincoln wasn't a liberal, right? He wasn't a modern day Democrat. No, the two parties didn't switch. We're in this chapter to say the two parties switch. And then um, I just came from there. Then, you know, I started a Republican club. I was asked to start a Republican club. I was asked to run for student government. And instead, I started a Republican club. I didn't see myself as a leader enough yet. Um, and then I interned for the Rudy Giuliani Presidential Committee. Got up at 5 a.m. And then I'd go to, to and I'd stay there till 3 or 4 p.m. Then I'd go to school and study history and political science till like 9 or 10 p.m. Learning so much. That's probably a point in time where I've learned the most. Then I realized it could be a White House intern because other people that were there were working in the White House previously or were a White House intern. Then I got the White House internship. Awesome. And that's, a, that's part of my journey. I don't know if I answered your question en enough. No, it's, it's really exciting. We're going to go to a short break, and then we'll be right back. Quédese con nosotros. Vamos unos uh, comerciales y regresamos. No se vaya. ¿Qué tal amigos? Ya estamos de regreso aquí en el canal de la verdad de Truchano, el único canal que le trae noticias verdaderas en su idioma. Y al momento conmigo una gran activista uh, con un historial tremendo que debe de seguir. Uh, Alicia, so you did go as an intern to the White House, you were telling me. How, how, what was that experience like for you to, to see? To, to, one, to know that whatever history you were reading about, that, that the White House exists, that it's a... It's a, it's a, it's a it's a place that you can go to. How, how, what was that like? It was so profound for me. On one hand, I had all the people around me, you know, people I cared about, just kind of judging me, telling me I'm brainwashed. Who brainwashed you constantly? And so when I got the interview, from the, you get a number from 202, it's the White House. And, you know, no other number, this is the area code. And your heart stops for a minute. Like, holy, sh the White House, right? Wow. And they're going to interview you, and I'm just completely candid. I'm completely candid about my view, my worldview. And for the first time, it, you know, I felt accepted. Not only did I get accepted, I got accepted to be a White House intern. And coming from where I'm coming from, you know, I didn't come from a rich family. I didn't go to Harvard. Right? I went to John, a, a, a good college. I started community college, got A's with this new conservative viewpoint, and then I, I studied political science at John Jay in New York. But to know that you can go from, you know, you can you can you can reach your dreams in this country when you believe, and you have to sometimes stand alone and what you know is the truth. When people are going to bully you and and impugn you, a whole classroom, a whole auditorium, the whole city, right? I remember when Bush won in two thousand four. I was like wearing an American flag shirt, happy, and it looked like it was a funeral, and <laughs> everywhere, and. Um, so it was, it was, it doesn't mean that once you get to that place, everything's up from there, right? Uh, you think, oh, I'm gonna go, I got to the White House, so I'm going to go work at Fox News and it's all up from there. But it was still a journey, still a journey. And the industry's changed and politics has changed. And what's required of you to uh, be a journalist has changed, right? What's required for you now is to get and make social media's change or get in front of video and have your few minute rants it can go longer than writing an article or doing some investigative project. I know you're a writer too, right? You're I'm writing. primarily a writer, yeah. Okay. It's but not, I'm a multimedia journalist. I go on camera, I do interviews, you know, but. Um, is it hard to write polit politics? I mean, to be objective, to, to, or, you know, to make sure that. I'm not always objective. I, okay. I write for what, what the, what the situation calls for, but there's a, there's an art in writing straight news. 
right? To be able to write straight news in this day and age well. Um, and you kind of just want to write in a very machine-like kind of way. Um, <laughs> it, must, it must be hard when, when you have, uh, you know, a few, uh, shows like, you know, like Hannity or things that where you have to sort of like push to one, you know, to one side, right? Is, is that well, I think, I think the thing is the truth speaks for itself, right? The fact is, for example, Democrats are lying about this impeachment stuff, right? That is that Joe Biden's son was in Burisma, getting 18, working for Burisma, getting $80,000 a month, and Trump asked for it to be investigated, and that the Democrat Party's in bed with Russia, and has been throughout his, historically, and the facts speak for themselves. You can present both sides fairly. You don't have to always slant it with an opinion, and that's the thing about it. It's not whether I'm conservative or Republican for me. I'd like to say I'm an independent. It just so happens that Republicans are more aligned with truth, are more aligned with righteousness and, uh, you know, civil rights and um, not worshiping Satan or throwing God out of the, the, the Constitution in the country and the pledge, etc. Not for uh, Republicans and conservatives are not for brainwashing small children into thinking they're transgenders. <laughs> right. So. <You> know <laughs> When I, and, and Forget what you want to call it. In 2009, when I went bankrupt, I spent a lot of time in the courts. Um, and I remember that my attorney used to tell me, Marco, uh, you know, writing is a craft. And, and uh, the best class that I can recommend for you to take, so you, it's, it's a journalism class. Because he, he was telling me that, that he actually took a few journalist classes and he just learned how to craft the, uh, a, a speech or writing, a pleading. Yeah, no, um, it, so, it's it's a so, sk it's a skill. It's look, it's it's you're constantly learning, so that's a great thing, right? You got to learn things and write about it as they're happening, as a journalist, and you got to get it right, and it needs it to be compelling a lot of the time too. Uh, but it's also like becoming more and more of a lost uh, art form. In this day of video where I can spend two to three days in a story or even get a drudge hit, but nothing is going to compare. It doesn't compare to getting on a video and saying something uh, edgy and getting notoriety and more fortune from that, you know? Like, like taco trucks on every corner or something like that? Taco trucks? Taco trucks on every corner. That's what I said when I went to MSNBC. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody went crazy with it. Um, yeah, I, I, I forget. I forget what your question was, but the um, question was on, on the um, if if it's hard to write, um, you know. To, to I'll tell you what, it takes a lot more time for sure oh, okay. <laughs> to write than to just hop in a camera. But I I think whatever you're putting out there, it make sure you're researching it. Make sure you're. Everything takes everything that I write about. I cross reference. I go to five, six sources, eight, nine sources, ten, twenty sources, depending on what we call for. Like right now, I'm writing about the border wall. We built the wall. Uh, Inc. They're building a border wall at the southern border. Okay, and there's all these 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 bureaucratic agencies that we've never heard of. Well, one in particular that's stopping the wall from being built. To get that story done takes sometimes you know two, three days, four or five days. <laughs> or a whole day, a lot of a lot of focus. But not only you have that. I mean, you you know how to do the writing, also. But you also go to the street. I have a, a couple of videos. I don't know, yeah. if, uh, Leo. I don't know if you can put a video. Um, this is the second one that I did, where you go to the street and you're not afraid to talk to these kids and just ask them why they're they don't like Trump. I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. Um, oh, no, that's actually not true. There's actually a video you can find where I was afraid. I was afraid for my life. My life flashed before my eyes. And it was at an, at a, it was the same day as a free speech rally in July. There was uh, Antifa. It was Antifa drag queens. And they were encircling me and clapping fans in my face. And it was like a nightmare. <laughs> So at that time, if I didn't have a friend nearby, I don't know what would have happened. But the left is so intolerant that I know you know, it's like entering a zombie 
world when you go to these Antifa rallies. You know, so much hate. You can feel the energy of hate radiate. You can feel the energy of love that radiate. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm just asking. I'm just, but the thing is, they don't know. That's the key here, right? I said you have to, to um, acknowledge that you haven't studied things for yourself. Acknowledge that you don't know. And that's how you can grow, right? It's not about your right, I'm right, Republican, Republican, Democrat, uh, liberal, conservative. It's like, what is the truth? So all these people, you go in these leftist protests, and you can see it in many Man in the Street videos. They have no idea why they're there. They hate Donald Trump. They can't do anything more than a talking point. They don't know who the vice president is. They want to claim Russia, uh, Trump worked with Russia to include, include an election, whatever, to rig the election. Don't know who Robert Mueller is, and on and on and on, right? And I, so I, 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 I simply question that this kid, like, and he's so, 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 and that's when the drag queens came for me. The I, I KKK drag video. queens. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've seen that in Berkeley, California, where you have all these kids watching what's going on, and and they kind of take sides with the liberal left, but they're also so, like, confused because Let's let's hear it. What she's saying. <laughs> free speech, are they? Oh, they just attacked the journalist last week and gave him a brain hemorrhage for doing what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I don't think it was like a uh, brain hemorrhage, uh, but uh, regardless, when you look at the numbers, there's a lot more violence coming from the right than coming from the left. Uh, if you look at the number of casualties. Like what? Like what's, when, what has a person that's a Trump supporter attacked violently, an innocent bystander? Like in Charleston, uh, I mean, you've also had uh, a lot of uh, white nationalists. And you've had the white nationalists who attacked the black church. Uh, let's see. Uh, the the, the brain freeze. You've had, like, Is that all rights racist? Is that what you're saying? Well, when you look at their uh, social media accounts, uh, they and their groups, their connections, their likes, uh, they're all pretty much uh, white nationalists. I'm, I'm, I'm a Trump supporter. I'm not white. Does that make me a white nationalist supporter? Well, ethno nationalism. Uh, It becomes... Are you saying that I'm a racist? I'm saying that uh, nationalism is a step away from ethno-nationalism. And, I mean, uh, when you... Uh, that, I saw the though. You gotta wait. You gotta go see when the dragon comes. Okay. I don't know. If you can... <laughs> yeah, we can wait. Give me a moment. So what is, he's trying to figure out yes. what to tell you, right? He's trying to... He's like, wait, wait, wait I don't have no time to answer that question. I didn't see enough... If you read American history... Well, when you look at American history, uh, you'll see that uh, the parties have switched yeah. alignment between... Yeah. Uh, you don't want to tell us to talk to him? <laughs> I'm so scared. As soon as I saw them... Wow, that's scary. It was very scary because the video doesn't show that they were so close to my face. And I almost saw this homie right here. And that's the only reason why, I don't know, I would have had to kick them in the face. I would have had to run for my life. And they look scary. I mean, And then they followed me. And it's like 110 degrees outside, DC swamp weather. Okay. It's so hot, and, just, and then the whole crowd followed me. I felt like a little glitch in the Matrix moment or something. Because after all of them were following me, and then they were like calling me Candace Owens. You can see in the video, it, it was just ridiculous. Are you? They were so you, you're, you're, so yeah, because they, they they're so racist. <laughs> they can't see. You're the ones that are racist. <laughs> <laughs> Burly grown men and sheep, wow. basically. Wow. It's, so, it's been happening to, to Republicans throughout history. These men in, in sheets killing Republicans. It, it, and, and this guy's, uh, I remember seeing that. I mean, that, that looks that looks like almost like witchcraft what they're doing. I mean, they're like it doing is, it. It is, though. We, we saw in 2016, 
through the e- the wiki the emails, the Podesta emails that the Democrat parties, the leadership, you know, Hillary Clinton's team, John Podesta is involved in spirit cooking dinner ritual. I, I I did get I did get I do get that feeling when we go to places like you know I've been in Portland I've been in Berkeley and, and there is a, a, a some some of that going on you know where there you know what I don't like I don't like when the and, and sorry to interrupt you Marco no, no but there's facts right in front of our face that we're not allowed to talk about right the stuff that's written in those emails that exchange between Marina Abramovic and John Podesta it's right in our face. But if we talk about it as conservative, you know, on the conservative journalists, conservative news media, or anybody, you're conspiracy theorists. You lo- risk losing your 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 uh, your your job, your your um, your advertising, right? Or even Seth Rich, stuff like that. You can't ask questions. They try to silence us. But there's a there there. You know. Wow. We're gonna go to a short break, and we'll be right back, and we can keep talking about that. Quédese con nosotros. Regresamos. They couldn't defeat him. So now the swamp's trying to take him out. First, the Mueller investigation. Now Ukraine, politics at its worst. President Trump is changing things, renegotiating bad trade deals, securing our border, creating six million new jobs. It isn't pretty. The swamp hates it. But Mr. Nice Guy won't cut it. It takes a tough guy to change Washington. It takes Donald Trump. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. ¿Qué tal amigos? Ya estamos de regreso aquí en el canal de la verdad con Alicia. Uh, acabamos de ver un video donde Alicia fue atacada por un montón de uh, drag queens, uh, transvestis. Uh, what, what are these guys? Are they, are they trans? They are the sisters of perpetual indulgence. They are actually the drag queens that read stories to toddlers at drag queen story time across the country. The sisters of perpetual Six. indulgence. Yes. Look at that name. I mean, what does that name mean? It's satanic. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately, when you try to investigate the corruption or the Podesta emails or what these drag queens represent, you got to learn about scary stuff. You got to learn about Satanism. Wow. That's what they're a part of. That's their ritual. That's their belief system. That's why they hate everything. They hate us. They hate Americans. They hate Trump. And then, you know, at the end of the day, though, Marco, you know, perhaps they were abused or traumatized when they were kids. I think we can get to more people. And I, I was staring at those drag queens in the face that day. And it's like, do you not have a soul? You know, <laughs> maybe they don't have a soul. But I think everyone else who has a soul, we can re- we can reach We speak more of the same language if you have differences than, than differences that we have. And I think, you know, what, how your view is about Democrat or Republican or politics, even if you think you don't care about your politics, is based off of what you've seen, what you've been through, what you heard. Um, and, and, and now there's more access to a different point of view, than more now than we've ever had before. In, in Berkeley, there was this sign that I had one of my signs uh, said, God bless Donald Trump. And I was putting it in front of their faces. And they were literally, like, foam was coming out of this guy's <laughs> mouth. I mean, he was so angry. He was just saying all kinds of things. You can feel the presence of something going on. Yeah, it's just brainwash. It's it's zombies. They're like zombies. And... Um, <laughs> um, How old is your daughter? Five. Five. She hears zombies. She's like, oh, do, do, do. So anyway. Um, so uh, I think you, you can save this. We can save this for when she's uh, 20 and she can see that she was part of your Oh, interview. man, I've done a lot of interviews <laughs> where she was younger and walks in saying, ah, you know, <laughs> coming in and begging for stuff. But because- um, Because what we're doing, what I'm doing here at the True Channel, I want to interview all these activists out there. So when you are rich and famous, just don't forget about us, okay? Well, that's the point. We can all become rich. If you want to be famous, I don't know. In order to get your message across, you got to have a bigger platform. You need some fame, right? Right. But um, the point for me in doing this is for 
people not be self imprisoned in their in their erroneous ideology, right? There's no reason in the United States of America for people to be impoverished. And we have all the opportunities. And we have all the opportunities to create the highest vision of ourselves. You know, it's um this this indoctrination of hatred, and um, people just hate Donald Trump, man. They just hate Republicans. It's nothing new. And and the thing is that it's you, sickening when I see how how they react to silly memes on Facebook. They want to report you. They want to ban you. They come and they the only time these leftists that I know from high school whatever ever come on my Facebook wall is to come and spew some hatred about how they how stupid conservatives are. So uh, they, they, there's, I've been looking at the news, studying politics for 16 years, almost every day. And these are the same people who can't stand to have the news on. They have to leave. If I ever wanted my friends or people to leave, to ha- leave like company to leave, I just put Fox News on and everybody goes home. <laughs> what do you think about Nancy Pelosi? I mean, you you've been there, you've been Gosh. watching this. Is, is this like crazy what she's doing? I mean, it's like what what is she doing? I don't even know how. Look at the corruption with this old twitching uh, senile lady is still House Speaker for time. It's like how is my whole like my entire adult life she's been, you know, House Speaker. Um, but it, it's absolutely insane, this impeachment thing. It's absolutely insane how Democrats take what they're guilty of, whatever it is specifically that they're guilty of, and then they blame the Republicans. They blame Donald Trump. And then their dumb constituents, their blind constituents go and believe it. It doesn't matter what the facts are. Like the whole Russia impeachment, I mean, the Russia uh election collusion hoax which is morphed into uh morphed into the impeachment ukrainian hoax it's all lies right the dnc server was never even investigated which the dnc server that was hacked right russia the, the dossier says trump colluded with russia to hack the dnc server there's no proof that that ever happened and yet they went on and on with the Mueller investigation and really the impeachment invest the impeachment sham. That's what it's still. This Nancy Pelosi just said two weeks ago. This is about Russia. The her twitch, twitching and her condescending um, mannerism. Now, what what about Do Democrats? Limits? See how crazy they are because she is, or they just don't care, or they love her. I don't I don't get it. She is so. Don't you think disgusting. That, that, <laughs> this this. Uh, Term limits should be something on us because when you have all these people and they they stay there for so long, I mean it's just uh, it's really a swamp. I mean, what Trump? You know what? It's it's really it's really up to it's it's really the people are electing her in her district, right? So the GOP's failed in a lot of ways, right? Why is it it takes Brandon Strzok to come along for the be a walk away movement, right? Why don't I see? Why don't we see people in Trump hats or even if they're not wearing MAGA gear? A coalition of people of different races go to these these uh, impoverished communities, go to the inner cities, and communicate the message. The Democrats are doing it, right? The Democrats um, have so much more unity, and they that we just we just abandon. It don't look. And here's the thing: it only takes what 15, 20 percent of the black vote for the Democrat Party to not be able to win elections anymore. Period, right? So we have to have 80% of black Americans voting Democrat for Democrats to win any presidency or stay in power in these districts. Where's the GOP? Where's the uh, the RNC spending some energy, spending some time well, and getting the message of unity uh, 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 of, of economics across? Yesterday, of family unity across. Yesterday, I spoke to the chair of the GOP in San Francisco, speaking of Nancy Pelosi. But the only reason he called me was because I interviewed his opponent that's running for that district, too. So I finally got to speak to him for, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of him for like three years. But I, I'm going to ask him that. You're right. I'm going to tell him, hey, what, are we, what are we doing here in the city to, to make that, this happen? What you're talking about, the 80 percent. Right. You see of Scott America. Hustler, for example, right? Right. He's going to the districts. Okay, Trump called out Elijah Cummings district, the late Elijah Cummings district in Baltimore. 
And then you got, you know, Scott Pressler picking up trash in, 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 in L.A. and in, in Baltimore. Where's the RNC? You know what? It doesn't take that much when I talk to people from inner cities or a black Democrat for a state. I ask them, why are you a Democrat? You know, not to, not to impugn them, not to be, be, belittle them or berate them for what their view, views are, but just to see how it is, what it is that they perceive. Why? And they won't tell you why. They don't have a good answer. They the don't answer know. verbatim is, they come to the conclusion, they, they haven't thought much about it. And they'll say to you, well, I'm a, I'm a Democrat because my, my mom was a Democrat. My, my, my grandma was a Democrat. And then they might be courageous enough to admit they don't know. So that's low hanging fruit where, you know, we could, uh, uh, as a Republican Party, be reaching out to these people, going to these communities, you know, and it's just a lot. It's it's an abandoned effort on the GOP side. Trump's done more progress through policies, you know, his economic policies, creating jobs is going to do is doing a lot. And now we have more people on social media than ever before. But as far as why the why is Nancy Pelosi in power? Why is Maxine Waters in power and Adam Schiff? It's because their their constituents are fools, and they're not getting exposure to the other side. You know, uh, when the DNC uh, intercepted those emails you were talking about, there was one about Hispanics, uh, where he talks about Hispanics being generational, like you were saying, traditional. So whatever the parents did, so the kids. Uh, I see kids here in, in California that are. Let's say they're kids of illegal aliens, right? So their parents, they they went to the Mexican market, they cashed the checks at the Mexican market, uh, and now the kids that are born here that are citizens, they're following the same same steps. They're, they're not even opening bank accounts. They're cashing the checks at the Mexican market. So we need to go to these kids and give them permission to be Americans, to give them permission to to break through from that that life, right? Yeah, it's uh, social conditioning. And look, I think we're at a point in time now where we can all wake a lot of people up because we have more technology. Technology just trying to censor us, but technology that's also unifying the world, uh, you know, and more faces can come out and say the truth. More people are waking up to the truth. CNN wasn't fake news 10 years ago, uh, unanimously, you know. We've come a long way, but it's up to us to put the work in. We're going to go to a short break and we'll be right back. Quédese con nosotros, regresamos. Fact. Joe Biden pressured Ukraine to fire its prosecutor. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> you got fired. Fact. The prosecutor said he was forced out for leading a corruption probe into Hunter Biden's company. Fact. Democrats want to impeach President Trump for discussing this investigation with Ukraine's president. Fact. Donald Trump won, but Democrats want to overturn the election. Don't let them. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. ¿Qué tal amigos? Ya estamos de regreso aquí en el canal de la verdad, de True Channel. Conmigo, Alicia, una activista que usted debe de conocer, uh, sigue, la puede seguir en las redes. Uh, Alicia, so you were telling me, you do, you, you do writing and then, so you got, got involved with uh, Building the Wall, thing. Yes, I'm with, uh, involved with a, I, I, I currently work for CORE. It's Steve Bannon's group. And Steve Bannon partnered with We Build the Wall, Inc. about a year ago. And 
I don't know if you guys remember We Build the Wall. What We Build the Wall Inc. is is a nonprofit organization started by triple amputee Brian Colfidge. And if you remember, there was a GoFundMe campaign about a year ago. And in like two or three weeks, in two or three weeks, he raised $25 million to build a wall. And so then he partnered up with uh, Bannon and Tom Tancredo and the Angel Moms. They, they sit on the advisory board and they're building a wall on the southern border. Now, it's not like hundreds of miles that have been built yet. So far, they've built uh, three quarters of a mile in, in, uh, El pa in um, Sunset Park, New Mexico, Sunland Park, New Mexico. And they're about to build a second uh, three mile uh three and a half mile border wall in mission texas on private land and um but it hasn't just been they're going to go build it there's this, this they haven't been able to build it they have to get permits from this this obscure organization no one's ever heard of it it's called the international boundary and water commission and um it's run by leftist hacks <laughs> and so after they built that wall in new mexico the uh, the commissioner of the IBCW, named Jane Harkins, she demanded, she ordered this gate to be left open, and then you see thousands of illegal immigrants just immediately started flooding through that gate. And and um, what's important about these walls, the, these 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 you know mile long walls, is that they're like snuggling routes because there's a fence there too, but there's these big gaps that aren't closed up yet. And so they're going in and closing these gaps, which makes it border patrols already praise we build a wall. Um, so has Homeland Security. But the IBCW is fighting them in court right now to stop them from building the next wall in Mission, Texas. Um, and they're saying it's because building a wall is going to cause floods. And, and the IBCW is half owned by Mexico and half owned by the United States. It's based off of a 18, an old treaty. <laughs> Uh, over a hundred years old, this treaty is. Um, so there's a lot going on with it. And then, of course, the Trump administration, Trump is building a wall, too. I don't know if we're going to have the 500 miles he's promising by 2020, because I can, I've can. i been focusing on what's happening with We Build the Wall, Inc. But I know that the, besides this, it's not just Democrats in Congress that are obstructing the wall. <laughs> you know, there's there's just obstacles in the way. And, and then at the same time, we have Democrats claiming that's racist. That's all they want to say, racist, 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 immoral, xenophobia, walls don't work. How ele It's like one plus one doesn't equal two. They're immoral. Walls don't work. Doors don't work. He's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Voter ID law is not necessary. That's racist, too. But let's give all the illegal immigrants um, well, ID cards I, I, so they can go vote illegally. You know, I was born and raised in Mexico, and, and in Mexico, one of the most important IDs you can have, probably, it's your, your electoral credential. So everybody knows that for you to be somebody, to be part of the people, you have to have your credential to, to, to be able to vote. And it's a federal ID. Yeah. So I don't know why we can't do that here. It's not so decentralized that it's just it's a mess. Every, everybody has their own. Well, we know why, because Democrats need to cheat to win. That's why we still have, that's why we have the impeachment uh, hearings going on. That's why they have to make up the, the, the Russia collusion hoax. And now, really, they're continuing their legacy of impoverishing and enslavement. Right? Because illegal immigrants come here. When you're not legal, you're going to struggle. You know, you're going to get the, the washing dishes jobs. You're, not, you're going to be paying less than minimum wage. And Democrats are okay with that. They're the party who wanted to keep slavery going in this country. They're the party of Jim Crow. Um, and they also are galvanizing people around the world, and that's just not, not just in the United States, to believe the GOP is racist. And of course, they're allowing you to come. They want you to come here. They don't want the border. So if you're a legal immigrant, you're going to be prone to being more pro-Democrat. Do you think that the wall uh, affects the livelihood of uh, like small cartels? Not, not the not the big ones, but the smaller ones that they're they're taking. And the wall kind of like puts a stop on that. And that's why you have. Yeah. So much well, let's say let's say for uh, months and months, you're snuggling in. Fentanyl, 
through where they built that wall at in, in, in New Mexico. Right? No one's really noticing it. You know the routes, the path road, you're getting your friends in there. They pay they pay uh some more illegal immigrants come, they give you a hundred bucks, you take them in the country a thousand bucks. Well now there's a there's a wall there. So just like it's it's a sim elementary as Donald Trump said. You're either gonna go around the wall or you're gonna try to get up. By the time you've done this, it, the you're giving Border Patrol more time to see What's the invasion is coming. It's very element, like, uh, it's very, re- it, it doesn't make sense how we have to explain these elementary things and and half the country just doesn't get it, right? And then, and, and also what we're working on now, and you can go to Gateway Pundit to check out the story tomorrow or later tonight, and we're doing a series. We Build the Wall Inc.'s foreign correspondent, Jeff Rain- Jeffrey Rainsforth is his name, traveled to um, seven different countries to explore the walls. So the Great Wall of China is what we were talking about first. That's the first article coming later tonight or tomorrow. And, you know, that took 2,500 years to build, but it successfully kept out um, the nomadic tribes who were coming to invade and raid. 2,500 years. 2,500 years. And it stopped in the 1800s. They finished it in the 1800s. Um, and, you know, there's just, there's walls in Malaysia. There's walls in Jordan. There's actually 65 uh, countries that have walls. Right? Does that mean that they're uh, nationalists? What's wrong with being nationalists? What's wrong with loving your country and wanting to protect your sovereignty? Nothing. Hey, you know, it's wrong to be a uh, ha- proud American. That's wrong. Right? Yeah, everybody can be a proud Puerto Rican or a proud Jamaican or a proud African, but it's not all right to be a proud American because that, that's the Obama and the Nancy Pelosi. That's how they're brainwashing their constituents to believe. And I don't know how they're going to wash uh, really Mexicans because Mexicans are very nationalist. <laughs> you know... Uh, you can't go to these other places and hop the border and stay there. First of all, you go to China. There's surveillance cameras everywhere, right? And and rain, uh, the the, the well, we build the wall. Inc.'s correspondent was like, you cannot not. There's cameras everywhere. They're watching you, right? And here you've got illegal immigrant sanctuary cities, and you know it's it, 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 Americans getting killed. I forget. The, I've written about it too. The number of homicides by people killed in America in the United States by illegal immigrants or the child predators running rampant. It's just... We, we're we're going to be pushing a movie here uh, by right now, the tra- trafficking, about human trafficking. And uh, it's it's uh, it's really sad what's going on in, in this country, in a developed country, that we're having such a big problem with human trafficking. Yeah. Well... Um, you know, Donald, President Trump brought the attention on the wall. But you know what? So did George Bush, and they built a fence, right? And what's not a great brand great wall, but Democrats are just okay with illegal immigration. They don't want borders. They want a globalist society. You can just walk, you know, let, go out into the protest. Borders are immoral. We should just be a one-world nation. Um, well, yeah, go tell that to the Mexican government or any, uh, lots of other governments. You can't just go there and stay there. Um, so hopefully there's a lot of progress made in the next eight, nine, 12 months. Cause I want to see president Trump come out and people don't have the wall in the front of their minds right now. We've got impeachment and now we have Iran on our minds, but this is his core campaign promise. And I hope that we, um, if every American donates $80 to we build the wall Inc. That organization will have enough to build uh, the whole 2,000 mile long border, the wall on the entire border. Just eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. Wow, Leo, did you hear that? Is there a link? Do you have a link for that? We can. Uh, you can here. go to uh, www.webuildthewallinc.com or webuildthewall.com. That's great. That's great to know because we can start helping. Uh, this organization pushed that. Where, where do you see yourself in the future? Do you see yourself running for office? Do you see yourself? Uh... I like I like being private. I like my privacy. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I don't want to run for office. I think I could want, run and win. I know I could. Um, just because I would go and speak to the people and win their hearts and minds one by one. You know, 
But um, in the future, I want to do something in this industry that makes a difference, that wakes people up. And maybe this is what it is, doing these kind of interviews one by one, and someone tunes in. I want to write a book exposing the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, I wow. think that... I think that that's something in, in every single person's family, there's someone suffering from mental illness and it's maltreated with some medication that just kind of sedates you and, 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 and causes ide- uh, homicidal and suicidal ideation and all these terrible side effects. Every mass shooter in this country, um, just about all of them have been on these psychotropic drugs. So anyways, that's there's something that I plan on delving into in the near future. There's a big organization here in uh, California. It's called Latinos for Medical Freedom. Uh, okay. And um, I want to see them uh, in San Diego. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them about you because, yeah, they were, they were telling me, all, here in California, <laughs> the pharmaceuticals, they make so much money. I mean, the, you go to a doctor. Of course. Look, the news industry is sponsored by the pharmaceutical industry. Um, that's why you have these ads and every, you know, you're watching the news and you oh, please take uh, whatever it is, this this crazy uh, medication that's going to make you sleep all day, want to kill yourself, have all these side effects, blah, 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 blah. and what you just, what, how do they even diagnose these mental illnesses, you know? It wasn't that long ago they were giving people lobotomies, and it is politically related, because these, they, the, the, these pharmaceutical uh, companies lobby the politicians in Washington get big paychecks too. Wow. We're going to go to a short break and we'll be right back. Quédese con nosotros. Regresamos. I'm here with the incredible people who fuel our factories, light up our homes, power our industries, and fill our hearts with true American pride. Anti-energy zealots are blinded by ideology. These Democrat plans would obliterate millions of American jobs devastating communities across Pennsylvania and bankrupting families all across our nation. As long as I am your president, that will never, ever even come close to happening. I will never stop fighting for you because I know that you are the ones who are rebuilding our nation. You are the ones who are restoring our strength. You are the ones renewing our spirit. And you are the ones who are making America greater than it has ever been before. ¿Qué tal amigos? Ya estamos de regreso aquí en el canal de la verdad conmigo, Alicia, una activista que verdaderamente usted debe de conocer, muy inteligente, muy guapa como todos los conservadores, las mujeres conservadoras. Uh, Alicia, I was asking you if you you're thinking of running because I, I mean, we really need uh, women to stand. I mean, it, it seems that out of all of us, women are the ones that are being uh, silenced the most. Would you mm. agree with me on that? How do you? But, how would you say women are being silenced? Not, not silenced, but most of the um, candidates that I have talked to are having a hard time competing in this political uh, uh, world. Well, like, like they, they don't they get taken seriously, especially the conservative movement. I think, you know, there's some conservative leaders out there. I guess the main, look at Michelle Malkin. You know, she's one of my favorite journalists. Look at Sarah Palin. I think, I think that, you know, women have, women, women are mothers. And with women are home, take care of the home. And there's a lot to balance. Right? The man goes out and works, and, you know. So I don't think that we're being silenced. I think the opportunity is there to, to, to seize and, and become whatever you want to become and do what you want to do in the society. If you can envision it and you don't give up, whatever it is, you and, and, and you don't give up, because there's going to be a thousand reasons on your path to give up. And there has been for me. But I don't think that we're being silenced, per se. I think... Apparently, there's more women who are liberal in this country than conservative. Oh, okay. Maybe that's, that's um, okay. and I think I, I think you know people in this country, women in this country are. Uh, I mean, we're in a Kim Kardashian society. 
everything's about how you look and not about substance anymore in this in this social media world and, and, and people are probably exhausted with it and no one can just be themselves and realize truth and searching for truth and becoming great based on your talent that your craft is more important than you know airbrushing your photo for two hours and put it on instagram <laughs> <laughs> but i don't think that anyone's being silenced um in this country you know uh i have to think about that all right, think, think about it. Remember, English is my second language, so sometimes I say things and it's we all not exact. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I want to make sure: how can we help you? How can what, what would you say that we Latinos for Trump, Hispanics for Trump, and and I know we want to stop that Latinos that we just want to be Americans. But how can we help your activism? Help my activism? I don't know. I'm looking for, for me, it's been very unsteady in this business. And for example, censorship has changed the whole thing, right? In 2015, 2016, websites were making money. They were booming. You just had, you, you post an article, it goes viral. Um, and then the social media and, and Google and especially Facebook, even though we're using this platform right now, we have no choice. There's no other place. It's a monopoly. What else are we going to use? So the companies that I've worked for, worked with, and loved working with have fallen. They've gone out of business. They've had to navigate through the censorship. And lots of the journalists, you know, can't are, are ban- that I know, friends, they're banned on using this platform. So it's been a very unsteady industry. I think, I don't, I just, when I make a podcast and I, uh, I stumble over my words because I don't do it by myself, I don't go, I interview people, I write stories, but I don't do the whole showmanship, being in front of the camera every day. Don't hate me in the comment section too much. <laughs> you know, just realize you got to start somewhere because that's what I'm going to do next. You know, I, I've seen a few industries go down in my in my time. First one I saw was the, uh, well, the internet started changing the car business. I was in the car business for a while. Then I went into the uh, dot com era in 2000. Uh, here, in technology, in the Silicon Valley that went down. Um, then the real estate. So yeah, it's the shelf uh, life of most of this is really short. So we have to just constantly keep. Well, uh, you know, it's short, but if it, uh, why do you do it, right? right? I always say, if you're gonna die, if, do what you love. So if you die tomorrow, you you, you say in your music. Right. And for me, too, I mean, I've always been an artist. I've been an artist since I was a child. And in the bigger in the long run, I want to do a graphic novel, painting history, drawing history, showing Donald Trump, pick Nancy Pelosi up and like her eyeballs popping out like he's Batman. <laughs> but um, that, so sounds that's like, that sounds like science fiction. No, no. it sounds like what, ha- what he does verbally on the regular. Yeah. Right. Metaphorically. So, um, cause man, for, so, uh, what, what does, what has Donald Trump awakened in you? Do you feel that there, Donald Trump did awaken something in you? That's a great question. I think every day, you know, when you're trying to navigate through not speaking up, not sticking and stand for yourself or somebody else, um, think of Donald Trump, think of Donald Trump getting off Marine one. Get it off the airplane, the helicopter at the White House, calling them out. He has the courage. He's like, has some next level courage to just say what you feel. And now, and it, here's one time I think we all can remember about Donald Trump, about how not to be a follower and to do what's right because it's right, no matter if the whole world wants to curse you. Um, remember when Ben Carson, during the presidential debates in 2016, did it? hear his name called in the debate stage. And then you see Ted Cruz walk by. He's like, oh, 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 buddy, you're an idiot. Pats him on the back. Uh, Jeb Bush calls by a boy guy. You didn't hear your name called. And they all the candidates, Marco Rubio, all the rest of them walk past Ben Carson. And I have the video on my YouTube. And Donald Trump stops. And he stands right next to him. And he just relieves Ben Carson of all that embarrassment, you know. And he, he, it proves how not to be a follower. And I think Donald Trump can, has brought out the leader in so many Americans. Even if the, so many people right now 
Candace Owens, Anomaly, people we all know on Facebook, they were leftists until Donald Trump came along, and now they're on our side with major platforms, um, and their message is disseminating throughout the, you know, throughout the country, throughout the world. They're going to the White House even, too, just, you know, keep going. So Donald Trump's inspired, I see, inspired the lead, a lot of leadership within myself, too, on day-to-day decisions. It's like, what would Donald Trump do right now? <laughs> He'd walk away. I'm not taking that deal. Whatever it is. Um, and you know, what a lot of people don't know is that he was already being paid millions of dollars. He was one of the best uh, paid speakers out there for multi-level network marketing companies for, you know, and, and and he is doing all that for us. He's giving that he give that to us for free. I mean, you well, go to one of his rallies. You know, it's his calling. It's just like his all these obstacles. You know, all, he's been broke before and came back again to be a billionaire. His mind is programmed for success. And I think all the presidents, the bad and the good, right? They are a a unique example of leadership and the obstacles in their path. You keep going and you believe and you make it. Okay, I got off track with that. But, yeah, (laughs) Donald Trump, I think he's one of the best presidents in American history. One of them, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I saw Donald Trump leave his heart and soul in the campaign trail. I mean, this guy went – sometimes I go to rally, I come back home so tired, mentally, you know, emotionally. And this guy was doing three, four a day. (laughs) At the end of this I don't know if you've ever seen. I don't know if you have enough time, but have you ever seen that movie? Oh my God! Or it's, it was George Burns, and the guy God is. T- well, I don't know if our viewers have seen it. It's just well, never mind. It's a great movie. I think that's how like this. Really, I think that Donald Trump is like God's choice to lead us right now. <laughs> yeah. Just before he came along, we were we were we were drowning in political correctness and jihadism spawning around the United States. Alicia, I'm so excited that you came on our show. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. I look thank forward you, to having Michael. another interview. Yes. I, and uh, I just want to say hi to Robin for introducing us. Hey, Robin. Robin. <laughs> she's a great, a great patriot. You know, she's helped me a lot. And I know she likes to be behind the scenes, but she, she's helped me a lot. Yes, she's one of my best friends. Awesome. So well, I'm happy she introduced us. And well, uh, I hope you all... Stay diligent this year. Don't take it for granted that we're going to win in 2020, okay? Don't. Spread those memes. Talk to your friends with compassion about why they shouldn't be leftists and patience, and don't take it for granted. Because Alicia, Donald Trump might be the last Republican president we have. Alicia, this is the uh, one of the only uh, Spanish media channels that we want to have out there. So if you have anybody you know, just tell them. Tell them about Sure. Okay. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Yeah. Gracias uh, por haber estado con nosotros. Uh, seguimos. Um... Leo, are we coming back? Pues, we're on a, I, I, I tuvieron a uh, Alicia. Alicia es una activista que la he seguido yo por ya un buen tiempo. Uh, ella es, es una joven que, que con mucho talento uh, ha estado de, en la Casa Blanca, uh, uh, trabaja como escritora, como escritora en, varias, uh, en varios lugares. Uh, le, le damos las gracias por haber estado con nosotros. Uh, siga disfrutando de nuestras programaciones y nos vemos mañana. Hasta pronto. Yo soy René Labán y estoy con mi querido amigo Rubén Rabaza, que me está mirando, porque ahorita le piché una ahí duro que... El nombre más buscado en Google era Tulsi Gabbard. ¿Conoces a Tulsi Gabbard, Rubén? Ahora la cabeza.